wind speed is very hard to estimate. And so what the uh, United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization recommends is that if you don't have wind speed at all, just assume the worldwide average of two meters per second. And so what I did is we did have data from the different locations around the island, uh, long-term average wind speed data, and I averaged it and found, oh, look, it's 1.9 meters per second. So it's very close to the worldwide average. So I used uh, that value in the analysis, but um, certainly one of the things we'll need to do in the future is try to, to come up with a more site-specific wind speed, because it's obviously very important. If you go to Ponce, it seems like the wind is blowing in the afternoon hard all the time, every day, and then you go to other places and it's not very windy. And so that has the effect of reducing the boundary layer uh, on the, over the leaf and the, the uh, aerodynamic resistance uh, goes down and the transpiration goes up when you have a higher wind speed. Uh, saturated vapor pressure can be estimated from minimum temperature and so that, that estimate over the island, uh, we have minimum temperature so we use that. And in this particular analysis, uh, initial effort, we, we didn't correct it, um, but uh, there are ways to, to improve the, the estimate of, actually what we want is the dew point temperature. In order to get the actual vapor pressure, we need dew point temperature. We can estimate that from the minimum temperature, minimum daily temperature, but um, we, we simply made the assumption that it was okay to use that in this study. And then there were some other parameters, the extraterrestrial radiation the, uh, we need for uh, estimating the net radiation, and also we, we need soil heat flux, and those were some uh, estimation procedures that came from Allen et al. 1998, which is the FAO. Uh, document. So here we have elevation for Puerto Rico. Oh, I said 2,000 meters. Actually, the maximum, I, I forgot, it's only about 1,200 meters in this area here. And the minimum is zero, which is the ocean around the outside. So from that, we estimated air temperature. And this is the uh, air temperature on March 5th. We have up in the mountains about uh, 13 to 14 uh, degrees as the average air temperature and along the coast about 20, uh, 23, 22, 23 degrees C. Uh, this was uh, adjusted or nudged based on real data. And these were the average daily air temperatures for for those seven sites, the NRCS sites, and uh, this is the equation that was used. So basically, we estimated air temperature, and then we used this equation to come out with the the value that we used. Uh, for example, if you go up to 21, you're it's very close actually, and you can see that the data is quite linear, but it's very minimal amount of, of data. Um, what we'll do in the future is we'll will get a lot more data. And it's also just from Western Puerto Rico. So if there's some some things, different things going on in Eastern Puerto Rico, then uh, that would that would be a problem. Integrated daily solar radiation then is shown here. This is from the uh, the remote sensing algorithm. And the, the units are in megajoules per meter squared per day. And um, you see it's quite variable. And the reason is that this day was a was a, a, a cloudy day. It was a, well, it was a scattered cloudy day, and it rained over in, in this area of the island. And so we can look at the the result. Oh, let me mention one thing about the, the satellite itself. GOES is a um, a geostationary satellite, which means that it sits over the same spot on the Earth all the time. And so the advantage of that is that you get you can get data from it like every 15 minutes. Actually, I think 
the, the fastest uh, download rate is about every six minutes. But the, what we're getting is every half hour, which is sufficient for our needs. But the beauty of it is that you're, you have that high time resolution. Um, the problem is that it's a passive sensor, so it only sees what's, what's in, uh, reflected or emitted uh, in the form of infrared radiation or visible uh, visible reflection. The other type of satellite is the polar orbiters. Um, for example, um, uh, this this type uh, MODIS is an example, and MODIS uses microwaves, so it can actually see through the clouds, and it can it can sense. Uh, uh, information in the different wavelength bands that that actually penetrate through the clouds and that that's a that's a real advantage the problem is is that it might only come over puerto rico twice a day and one of the times might be in the middle of the night and so it's not it, therefore it makes it not very useful and what people tend to do is they try to combine the two methods uh, they get information from the polar orbiter and then combine it with this. Um, but in our case, we're only using the geostationary method. So you can see here we had this cloud band uh, running along this way. Over here, it seems to be a little clearer. Of course, this is just a point uh, snapshot in time, about 3.15 in the afternoon. Uh, this is an X-ray radar uh, result, and it's rainfall. So this is inches of rain over here, and so you can see that there was some rain uh, in this part of the island, and especially over in San Juan, there was some rain there. So uh, I, I specifically did not want to use a completely clear day because it would be very boring. Um, but but uh, this, this uh, what we'd like to, to know is how the evapotranspiration varies from day to day under all kinds of conditions, just not, not only under sunny conditions. So I have a few more minutes. So this is the result of the pendant monteith, and it looks like solar radiation, which is not surprising because evapotranspiration is highly correlated with solar radiation. But the range here goes from about two to a little over four millimeters per day. And those results are quite reasonable. That's uh, about what you would expect. Uh, but it's very low up in the mountains. And over where we saw high solar radiation, uh, we have high evapotranspiration. Uh, there is some higher values here. We had rainfall over here. But as you know, the rainfall might have occurred very rapidly uh, over a short period of time. So we could have. Uh, quite a bit of rainfall, even though we had, um, I'm sorry, we could have had significant evapotranspiration, even though we had rainfall, a, a significant amount of rainfall at a certain location. And I was just thinking, this is a, a problem. I was using a hydrologic model recently where the authors assumed that if you had rainfall, there was no ET during the day. And that kind of makes sense because when it's rainy, there's low solar radiation and it's humid. So you'd probably get a, argue that you're going to get a small amount of evapotranspiration. But, what, what, but that's really